in this lecture I'll introduce to you some useful functions that we'll be discussing in subsequent lectures. We are already familiar with the functions sum, average, max and min. These functions we've already discussed and we've used them a couple of times but there are many other useful functions that Excel provides as I have already said Excel includes thousands of files but we have selected a small subset of these files which are extraordinarily useful and used very very often. So one of those functions is if which is to say if a certain condition is satisfied then put something in the cell otherwise put something else in the cell. In other words the decision of what to put in the cell depends upon the outcome of some test. Of course we'll be introducing all of these discussing this in great detail in subsequent lecture. I just want to give you an introduction now. And then there are logical functions like AND and OR which is uh, typically they are used in conjunction with IF uh, which is to say if a certain condition is satisfied and another condition is satisfied then put this value in the cell otherwise put some other value in the cell. Similarly the OR functions is uh, if A is true or B is true then put this value otherwise put some other value. Okay, So the way I have explained it is uh, AND and OR in conjunction with F uh, with IF. Now AND and OR can also be used independently but in this course we are just going to look at the use of AND and OR functions in conjunction with IF. Okay. Another set of useful functions are what are called as lookup functions which is to say you've got a lookup table uh, and the value that you put into a cell depends upon whether some other value falls in a particular range within the lookup. Okay. Once again at this point I don't want to get into the details of the function uh, but these are very useful functions and we'll be discussing these shortly in an upcoming lecture. And then there are some financial functions. Right? Obviously Excel is used quite a lot in financial related computations and first of all we'll discuss the functions for computing the present value of a future monetary earning and the future value of a present monetary earning. Okay, so these two are very fundamental financial calculations because time value of money is of the essence in finance and we'll discuss those in this lecture. And then in that same lecture about financial uh, functions, we'll also look at two other important functions, the PMT function and the IPMT function, both connected with computing mortgage payments, which is uh, when you take out a mortgage and then you're paying equal monthly installments of your mortgage, you're paying it off. So that is, uh, compute, that is computed using the PMT function and the IPMT function is used to compute the interest portion of this mortgage payment. Once again the details will follow shortly. And then finally there is another very useful function which is called the sum product function. Uh, now whenever we've got two sets of values, you know for example I've got the number of items I bought, let's say I bought 10 pens, uh, 20 pencils, 30 erasers and then I've got another set of values which are the prices of these items. You know each pencil costs 50 cents, uh, each pen costs a dollar, each eraser costs 25 cents. Let's say we've got that and now to calculate the total cost what we have to do is to multiply the number of pens by the price of the pens, add up to that the number of pencils by the price of pencils and add up to that the number of erasers and the price of erasers. Right? So we can write a complicated formula for this uh, but because this pattern occurs frequently Excel has a built-in function to do this and that is called the sum product function. Okay? So these are all the functions that we are going to be looking at in the upcoming lectures. Of course we won't discuss the first four of them because we have already covered them. 